Hey Gadget Groupies, we're getting to the end of the year and that means our lists of favorite gadgets and gizmos that we've reviewed throughout 2017. Instead of the more objective ranked and scored video we'll be producing on Pocket Now, I wanted to share my own personal thoughts on the phones that I've reviewed. So if you're one of those individuals who gets overly triggered whenever you hear something subjective, you probably are gonna wanna watch another video. The rest of you still with me? All right, awesome. 2017 was another interesting year for phones. This is a very good year for phones. So I wanna jump right in with my top five favorites. These are the phones that I enjoyed reviewing the most over 2017, ranked in no particular order other than how much I like them, which means they're totally subjectively ranked and this is all about my personal b -b 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 bias Kicking things off with number five, we've got the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. The phone I've spent the least amount of time with this year, we're still producing our full review, should be up later this week on Pocket Now. This is also one of the more controversial entries on this list of smartphones in that there's some disparity between the Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro. Some folks are saying the Mate 10 is the better phone. I I can't speak to that controversy because I've only spent time with the Pro. What we arrive at though, a lot of the things that I really enjoyed about my Mate 9 are still on display here. The Leica dual camera system, the IR blaster to use the phone as a universal remote, and it's all wrapped up in probably the most aesthetically pleasing design of the year. Anyone who's dropping me a comment to say that Apple has the prettiest phone of the year is automatically disqualified for the unibrow. It's not without some foibles. I'm not the biggest fan of glass back phones, but if you want a big powerful phone with a big powerful battery, this phone should definitely be on your list. And speaking of phones with big batteries, we've got Samsung in the number four spot. Not talking Note, not talking Galaxy S, we're talking about the S8 Active. The Galaxy S without the curved glass on the front face, the Galaxy S without the curved glass on the back, and the Galaxy S with the biggest battery. One of the few flagship grade phones of the year where you don't feel like you need to use it with the case. All of the Samsung features and software that we've come to know and love and epic runtime. This was a very good year for Samsung's more durable flagship phone as it's no longer an AT&T exclusive. Subscribers on T-Mobile and Sprint will also get to partake of the ruggedized fare of the S8 Active. In an era of really pretty, really expensive, and really fragile devices, the S8 Active stands alone in offering up top tier performance, excellent battery life, and a little bit more lifestyle durability. In the number three spot for my hobbit hands and stumpy thumbs, we gotta take things small, and that means talking about the Sony Xperia XZ1 Compact. The more I use this phone, the more I enjoy it, and it's become my travel pick. You know, you're walking through an airport, luggage in one hand, trying to operate your gadget with one thumb. This is the device for people who don't want to dedicate both hands and controlling everything on your screen. Definitely not without its Sony quirks, a camera app that fights you a whole bunch, a few little tweaks to your home screen, but you do get that Android 8 Oreo goodness ready to go, one of the few phones launching with Google's newest operating system. You get cool 3D VR face scanning or object scanning so you can take it to a 3D printer and that ultra slow motion mode is pretty cool to play with. The specs on paper might scare a few folks off, especially looking at things like the battery capacity, but with a smaller and lower resolution display, it's got the same size cell as a Pixel 2, meaning you're apt to get better runtime and it still has a headphone jack. We can be pretty confident this is the last of the big bezel boxy aesthetic from Sony, but this phone's got a lot to offer in a fairly petite form factor, and it's the last truly small form factor device in Android land competing against phones like the aged iPhone SE. Right now, this is my favorite backup phone, my weekender, and it makes an excellent Robin to another phone's Batman. Number two spot belongs to the phone that surprised me the most this year. It's making a pretty stellar comeback for a company that used to rule the roost when it came to mobile messaging and communication, and that's BlackBerry with the Key One. I love this phone. It's a great throwback to the era of hardware, tactile keyboards, customization, building shortcuts into each individual key, excellent fingerprint space bar location, capacitive keys to control and swipe through different apps and lists and menus, augment camera controls, 
and it's a phone that looks like it's properly built for grown-ups. If you followed any of my videos, you know how much I like a grippy back with metal edges, phones like the, uh, the Galaxy Note 4, the LG V10, and this phone takes me right back to that kind of hand feel. When you combine that with true two-day battery life, I even made it through a light casual three-day weekend on a single charge. What we arrive at is the absolute best mobile communications device of 2017. Blackberry's worth talking about again, and we're all really excited to see where they go next. But not all phones can be my favorite or my daily driver. And that means we're at the end of this list, the number one pick, the phone with my personal SIM card inside, and that, of course, is the LG V30. My personal favorite phone of the year, this is a phone that was designed for Juan to get his work done. The absolute best headphone jack built into any mobile device of the year, easily competing with really premium mobile music players, an excellent dual camera system, a newly improved lens, this is one of the sharpest cameras of the year, and phenomenal microphones. This is one of the best solutions for people who often record in loud environments. Combined with software that actually takes advantage of all that hardware, and we've got the most formidable multimedia content creation consumption and creation package of the year. But of course, it's LG, so it's not without a little controversy. We wish they would step up their advertising game. I really like the screen on my V30. I got pretty lucky, but of course, we're going to have to recommend if people are shopping this phone that they keep a close eye on the OLED quality that ships on their phone. And even though this phone is rated IP68 and mil-spec 810G drop and shock resistant, we do lose a little peace of mind with this glass back. It's easily one of the most attractive phones of the year, but again, glass on front and the back makes this more fragile, so my V30, unlike my V10, will always be leaving the house with some kind of case attached to it. There you have it, folks, my top five favorite phones of 2017, the phones I enjoyed reviewing the most, and this was an excellent year at all price tiers. There are a ton of honorable mentions we could spend time talking about. We had the Honor 9 taking us back to my favorite days of the Galaxy S7. We have the OnePlus 5 taking us back to our favorite days of the iPhone 7. And we had the HTC U11s taking us back to our favorite days of 1970s disco. And this was yet another terrific year in making sure that our entry level and lower tier mid-range phones provided high quality experiences to consumers that we weren't punishing people who were a little bit more budget conscious trying to save some cash. So what were your favorite phones of 2017? Drop me a comment down below. Let's get into some fun conversations about the tech we love. We'll probably put together a more objective list from all of the uh, the producers and all of the editors at Pocket Now rather than just my inane ramblings. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for all of my personal vloggy and experimental videos. You can catch my smartphone, tablet, and wearable coverage over on Pocket Now. Catch my new show, New Egg Now, on the New Egg channel, newegg.com. And uh, we're introducing a new podcast. My buddy Andrew and I are putting together a book club, an online book club called The Geek Book Club. Club. You can already subscribe to the RSS feed on Google Play, on iTunes, and I think we might be on Pocket Cast. So you can catch all of that fun reading goodness. We're going to be covering some amazing books, and we hope that you'll join us for some fun, geeky conversations. You can catch me around the web, the socials, at Some Gadget Guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.